Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a great day. If you clicked on this video, you're here to see 10 games like Stardew Valley. All right guys, at number one, we have My Time at Portia. If you like to quest, gain relationships, craft, and make babies, then this is the game for you. The game's combat is very simple hack and slash, but the variety of enemies keeps things interesting. Even though there is a good variety of enemies, I did encounter the same boss in a few different dungeons and they are easy. The background music is very peaceful and happy. If you manage to marry the right person though, you will get discounts at their shops or give you helpful stat bonuses. I think it's definitely worth investing in marriage or just regular friendships. Alrighty guys, at number two, we have Monster Harvest. Monster Harvest is part of a growing genre that tries to combine farming sims with Pokemon. Unfortunately, by trying to cram as many things as possible into one tiny title, you're getting a very little nibble of different mechanics instead of a filling feast. The monster RPG content is so poorly done that it might as well have not been implemented at all. It clearly took focus away from the decent farm sim portion of the gameplay. I never said that this list was going to be all good games. This one is mediocre at best, but can still serve as a time killer. At number three, we have Innocent Life. Innocent Life's protagonist is about a robot boy who's trying to learn what it is to be human. The main objective of this game is to keep an angry spirit happy by not erupting a volcano by restoring the land to its natural beauty. Innocent Life's graphic style is pretty good looking for its age. It has very appealing sprites and backgrounds. As the game progresses, it becomes pretty easy to get money as you can just mine ore, sell wood, and other items. Overall, I think this is a very fun and peaceful game with a great story. This is a PSP exclusive. At number four, we have Harvest Moon Save the Homeland. This was my very first farm life simulation game that I ever played and it has a very special place in my heart. The object of this game is to successfully save your village from being turned into this giant resort. The construction begins one year from the start of the game and you have exactly that whole year to save your homeland before that happens. There is a ton of replayability here as there are, I believe, nine different endings. This game can also be downloaded and enjoyed on your PS4 and PS5 system. It's definitely worth your time. It's a great game. At number five, we have Atelier Ryza. The Atelier games are so awesome. This was my very first Atelier game in the series and I've been trying to collect all the Atelier games ever since. Our protagonist, Ryza Stout, is in her early teens and she is in search of some serious adventure. She takes her friends on this gigantic quest and after playing this game for about five hours, I would have gladly paid the $60 price tag. I only paid $20 for it on Facebook Marketplace. Alchemy is a bit overwhelming at first. Luckily, there's an auto-synthesizing mechanic to help you better understand the system until you get better at it. The game is absolutely stunning. I love the graphic style of this game, the environment, the characters, and of course, Ryza herself. Man, she's thick. Woo! At number six, we have Rune Factory Frontier. Rune Factory Frontier is a Wii exclusive and a great one at that. This game has it all. Farming, caring for others, great combat, monsters, cooking, fishing, crafting, tools. If this wasn't a farming sim, you should at least give it a shot regardless. All the elements of Harvest Moon and a light RPG meshed into one sweet title. You can tell that a lot of love went into this game. The graphics are beautiful. There's also high production cutscenes thrown in as well. I picked up this game for five bucks a few years ago. Now it's in the range of, I don't know, 35 to $45 complete in box. This is a very fun game on this list. Surprised the hell out of me. At number seven, we have The Sims. What more do I have to say? It's the frickin' Sims. I'll go with the original game for this video, but they're all good and have kept players coming back for years. There were a ton of DLC expansions for this game. It's very addictive, has infinite replay value, and the soundtrack is amazing. The isometric fake 3D world may not appeal to the newer gamers of today, but its charm lives on and its replayability remains intact. 
This was an excellent game for the time and created a whole new genre of gameplay. Did you guys know that there are tons and tons of ways to torture and or kill your sims? If you want to know how, you'll have to find out by playing the game. It is definitely worth your time. At number 8, we have Kataria Fables. Kataria Fables is an adorable feline-filled action-adventure RPG with an enjoyable battle system, detailed scenery, and nice character art. If I had to compare this game to another game, it would be Fantasy Life on the 3DS. Kataria Fables offers some very fun exploration and combat and the quest for materials and better equipment. There is a fun and cute game here for those who like to take their time. It's especially fun if you have a significant other or a friend to play on the couch for some co-op gameplay. I really enjoyed this one, guys. It's definitely worth your time as well. At number nine, we have Spiritfarer. Spiritfarer is an indie simulation and sandbox action game. In this game, you get to play as Stella, a fairy master to the deceased, where you'll get to befriend spirits and help them get to the afterlife. The game has a way of making you feel very, very strongly for the spirits on your boat. Even if at first you don't feel particularly fond of them, they begin to grow on you. This game is fantastic overall. It has a great story, tight controls, great graphics, and you can even hug an NPC if you want to. I feel like this game is the perfect blend of Stardew Valley, Night in the Woods, Sea of Thieves, and the very last game on our list, number 10, Animal Crossing. Need I say more? Everyone who clicked on this video knows about Animal Crossing. If you don't, Animal Crossing allows you to interact with a virtual village of animals that are doing something different every minute of every day. It's a really, really unique game. With Animal Crossing's unique 24-hour clock, the game's unique events can be in sync with our time. If it's daytime in our world, it's daytime in the game. If it's nighttime, it's nighttime in the game. It's really neat. The dynamic gameplay setup requires you to return every day to complete your daily routines, build relationships with your villagers, celebrate special days and holidays, collect furnishings for your homes, and just live out a peaceful life in your second virtual world. The coolest feature about this game to me on the GameCube version is that you can find and play full original NES games and play them in your house in the game. I'm talking games like Excitebike, Donkey Kong, Mario, Zelda, and even Punch-Out. It was such a great game and probably my favorite even over Stardew Valley. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you can, like and subscribe. It really helps us get out our content to more people. Also sharing, sharing with your family and your friends really, really helps us out as well. We appreciate you guys. If you have any comments that you wanna add or any questions, any feedback for us, we will greatly appreciate any kind of comments or interaction that you would be willing to have with us. We appreciate your time and thank you for watching. Have a great day.